Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we are going to be looking at the really fun but also really nerve-wracking topic of mentors and why do they die so much? <laughs> When I was originally planning for this video, I ended up writing so much, including the types of mentors you can have, the theory behind mentors, the reasons why so many of them kick the bucket at the worst possible time, and it ended up being so long, so I'm actually going to split this video into two. <laughs> so for this first video, we're going to be looking at what is a mentor? What are they really used for? Are they needed in stories? What purpose do they serve? Are they just tools for your main character? Or do they actually have a much deeper meaning behind them? And yeah. <laughs> it's not so much a science, but a study. It is a study. <laughs> so first off, let's ask the obvious question that we probably already know the answer to, but let's just cover it for the hell of it anyway. What is a mentor? <laughs> A mentor is like a guiding force for your main character. We have them in so many stories, most likely fantasy or sci-fi, but they are usually an older figure, a parental figure, a, you know, a person that has already been around the road a few times, had their own adventures, they know their stuff, they are skilled, they are smart, and now it is time to pass on the torch and they train and teach our main characters the ways of the world in order for them to survive on their own adventure and they do have a habit of dying <laughs> a lot <laughs> i mean as soon as someone comes in is like yeah sure i'll teach you this thing instantly the death flag goes up <laughs> oftentimes they can act as an intro or an expositional door to the new world around them say your main character has stumbled into this world and now has discovered that magic is a thing and they need to learn magic in order to survive and finish whatever quest they're on guaranteed you will have a mentor of some kind teaching them magic or teaching them the ways of the world and how magic came about in the first place and different kinds of magic etc but they just seem to be an expert and now they're teaching you for some reason it is annoying because a lot of the time a mentor is used as a very lazy tool so that writers can get away with being like, oh well it's not me giving all of this exposition and how the world works and things that aren't even relevant, it's not me, it's the mentor explaining to the character and therefore they're explaining to you. No, it is still exposition, mentors need so much more respect than that, do not make them an exposition dump. <laughs> They're also a good tool for development, not only in the sense that when your character starts off they are just... They, are, they either have some skills but not a lot, or they are just completely new to all of this and need training right from the beginning. It's good in a sense of development that they grow, a sense, that your character develops a sense of responsibility for them, they start to understand their own power, they start to harness that power. It's very cleverly done, because now you have an excuse of why your character is suddenly a badass because they have been trained, they have been taught, and they have been supervised the whole time. Also gives room for your character to experience some rebellion against mentors, which is great as well because then they have more lessons to learn when they rebel and it ultimately goes wrong. <laughs> but are mentors needed for every story? The answer is no. <laughs> like I said, they mostly pop up in fantasy or sci-fi, that kind of thing when there's an entirely new world to get used to, or a completely alien skill that they need to master. Usually they show up then, and it is necessary to have someone to show them the ropes, but they're not always needed. I mean, sometimes a hero is perfectly capable of learning things in their own way, through their own mistakes, and learning how to harness this power or this skill in their own way. They don't always need someone to teach them but it can be good for development to have someone to at least converse with and bounce off of, but a mentor isn't always necessary. I mean, if you're going to have a detective story and there's a newbie detective that's, you know, trying to make his way, he doesn't always need a mentor. He can have inspirations, maybe there's like people, maybe he's read about other detectives and that's made him want to be one, but they're more than capable of doing things the, you know, the school way. <laughs> Sometimes a hero just has a tragic backstory that has forced them to be more street smart and therefore 
learn skills that not many people would just in order to survive. You don't always need someone to... You don't always need a Fagin. <laughs> Do I like mentors? Yes. When they're written well, they are so cleverly done and they have this charm about them that even if they're not a great mentor, they're still fun to be around and they still provide some lessons even though they might not know that they're teaching them. I love mentors. Do I use mentors in my writing? I haven't recently, but I do have another story planned where there is going to be a mentor. Going off topic. <laughs> just learn to pick and choose your mentors. Don't put them in just because you want an easy out of how your character is suddenly a badass. Don't do it just to have an excuse to dump exposition on your readers that is not relevant. Pick and choose your mentors carefully. <laughs> a very good question when it comes to mentors is Clearly the mentor is more experienced, they've had their own adventures, they've done their own thing and they've mastered whatever it is that is relevant for the plot at the time. So if they're so skilled and cool and have had these adventures, then why isn't the story about them? And I love that question and it can sort of come about in many different ways. Sometimes, sometimes the guy is just too old. Sometimes they have, like you said, they've had their adventures, they've done their own thing. They don't need to go on another adventure. They are perfectly happy training someone else to do the hard work for them. They're old, they're done, they're retired, they want to be left alone. <laughs> Sometimes they just don't care. <laughs> How many mentors have you seen that don't want to be mentors? They don't want to be partner of the adventure. They're dragged along for the ride anyway and ultimately they decide at the end, fine I'll help you out but I'm not doing the dirty work for you. And they just don't care and that's probably one of the most fun ones because they have more of a developmental arc themselves but that's gonna, all that is going to be saved for the other video. More often than not you have the very lazy but very popular but your main character is the chosen one. Your main character is the chosen one, they're the only one who can do the thing, they're the only one who can go on this adventure, they're the only one that can slay the dragon, they're the only one that can solve the case. And your mentor knows this, so they're not going to put themselves in harm's way or they're not going to put themselves in a position of too much power if they know that this is not their fight, that this is not their story, this is for, you know, they, their young grasshopper to go on and do the fight. <laughs> More often than not, they don't need to prove themselves anymore. There's probably legends about them written down somewhere. They probably have their face in some hall of fame. Whatever relic they found is in a museum somewhere. They've proved themselves. They do not need to go on another adventure just to prove that, hey, I've still got it because they're done. <laughs> However, if you do have a mentor that just still wants to go along to prove that he's still got it, that there's still some fight in him, there's a good chance for a redemption arc there and you need to hang on to that because those are very very rare and unfortunately they do sometimes result in death with a heroic sacrifice just to prove that hey I've still got it but you've got more of it so I'm gonna give you the head start you need by putting myself in harm's way and good lord that can hurt so badly. <laughs> yes mentors can have character arcs and it's really hard to balance because you're already trying to do the arc of your main characters and their story and how they're progressing and how they're developing and you know they they have their mentor therefore they're learning and they're putting themselves in harm's way to get better to get stronger in order to become a better person because as i've said with character development whoever you have at the beginning of your book cannot be the same as the person you end up with at the end because that shows that there is no development whatsoever. It's a really difficult balance but a necessary one in order to create great stories. Your mentor might not need an arc because they've done all this before, they're already the person at the end of their story. But that's not to say that development just stops. <laughs> I mean, if development just stopped, then why would we be having so many sequels of so many stories and movies and books and TV series going on and on and on? Characters need to keep changing because humans keep changing. Our personalities are constantly evolving because of situations and experiences and relationships. We're not the same person we were last year. We weren't the same person that we were when we were like five years old. We keep changing and it's the same for your characters no matter their age. 
If you have a mentor that's down on his luck, that, you know, the, the depressed, reluctant mentor, they don't want anything to do with the adventure, that's a great arc that they are learning to open up again, that they're learning to let people back into their lives. You can have mentors that think that they know it all, but then out of nowhere, it's the, it's the student that teaches them something and they learn a lesson from it and therefore become a better person. Even when you have villainous mentors, which is a very interesting topic and will be saved for the next video, villainous mentors can have moments of redemption, but then they can also have moments of pure despicable evil where you think, okay, maybe they're going to learn something from the student, maybe they're going to be redeemed, maybe they're going to be the good guy or have some heroic sacrifice and then just completely stab them all in the back, which makes the betrayal so much more juicy. <laughs> It can go either way. Every character deserves an arc. Why not your mentors? <laughs> then moving on onto the topic of arcs and how they can end. Why is it that mentors die so much and such at such inconvenient times as well? As soon as a mentor steps onto the page or walks on screen, instantly you have a couple of death flags flying up because if they have anything to offer the main character, if they have any lessons that need learning, if they have experience that they'd love to pass on, guaranteed they are going to outrun their usefulness to the main character, the main character is going to outgrow them, there's going to be some kind of big threat that only the mentor can handle because, you know, the main character isn't strong enough yet only to find out that, oh, they're just too old, oh, they're just too out of practice, and their last one remaining act of being a hero and being the best damn mental parental figure, you name it, is to give up their life in order for our hero to thrive. <sighs> at the end of the day, sometimes mentors are just too good. They have too much knowledge, they have too much experience, they are too useful to plot and the main character because you can't help but wonder if they're that good then why aren't they doing all of the main stuff now going going back to before we have covered why they wouldn't be able to but at the same time if they're always going to be around the main character then the main character is always going to have easy answers and easy solutions and that does not make for an interesting read because we like our characters to suffer so in a similar way it is so easy to kill off mentors because it provides our main character with a good chance for development because they go into their own sadness, their own denial, their own hurt, and they need to claw their way back out in order to honour the person that taught them so much and set them on the right path. And you know, this is all for them, this is all to avenge them. It's great motivation. In a similar vein, it is so easy to kill off the main character's parents, kidnap a love interest, put a sibling in danger, you name it. It is all under the same umbrella that it provides the character with emotion and motivation in order to push forward. But do mentors always need to die? No. The idea of a heroic sacrifice is great, but it can be very overdone and sometimes it just feels so unnecessary because if they're that experienced, surely they should have seen this coming. And if they did see it coming, why are they just so accepting of it? <laughs> it goes back to character arcs. If the mentor learns something from the main character, then that gives a chance of development or redemption. And why would you want to waste that? Sometimes the, at the end of the story, the mentor has realised this is not the path that they want to be on. Maybe they want to go back to their hometown. Maybe they want to track down a loved one. Maybe they just want to retire in peace and say goodbye to the adventuring game. At the end of the day, mentors are people and not everyone is going to want to give up their life, no matter how much they love the person. They might not want to die. <laughs> if they're a villain, do they escape at the last minute and make a run for it and the main character has to let them go because even though they're a bad guy, god they still love them, like Captain Silver in uh, and Jim Hawkins in Treasure Planet. Do they have to, you know, are they captured and have to answer for their crimes? Do they get taken away? Do they get kidnapped and then that's motivation for the sequel because now they, they're the ones who need saving? Do they just retire? Do they just go off on their own journey? Do they do their own thing? There are many ways in order to save a mentor and still have them matter. 
It's like there's a sixth sense that mentors just know when they're not needed anymore. They know when they've taught their student everything. They know when they've given all of the information they can. They just know. And some of them fight it. If you have a mentor that fights it, like, no, there's still more I can teach you. No, there's still more. Just please don't go just yet. That shows attachment and development. And it, it's so great to see that sometimes they don't fight it and they just let the person go. And it's sad and it's bittersweet, but it's better than just being like, well, guess I'm out of nuggets of wisdom for you. Guess I'll just kick the bucket. <laughs> it is easy to kill off a mentor in order to give the character motivation, but you don't need to do it just to prove a point. <laughs> in a great twist, can the hero actually be the mentor? Yes, sometimes the student will become the teacher. And that is a great twist on the dynamic. Sometimes the main character has had their own hardships and their own grim backstory. They have their own lessons that they have had to teach themselves. And now when they're being taught something, they give new information to exchange. It's a great little dynamic and it puts mentor and student on more level ground, just in very different ways. There are different types of smarts, therefore there are different types of lessons, so why shouldn't the student be able to teach the teacher something? <laughs> when the main character is being mentored, they are not a blank slate. They are a human, they have had some development before being thrown into the mentor situation. They have their own stuff to give, so why not let them give it? Even if it doesn't have a huge impact on the plot, it can still have a huge impact on the characters, and that can be just as interesting. Be it a friendship or a parent-child sort of situation, or even just a connection. They've been lacking a connection and this is it. Little things go a long way. At the end of the day, mentors are not simple. Rude. Mentors are not simple. They appear simple at a first glance because they are just, they're just there to teach the main character something. They're just there to put them on the right path and teach them a skill and then we don't have to worry about them anymore. That is not the case. They have had so much development in the past. They've had their own experiences, their own adventures. They are so smart and clever and skilled and there's just so much to them. Why shouldn't we explore it? Don't just write them off as a quick death because it's easy or because it's emotional manipulation to taunt your readers into reading more or to just do it because you want one less character. Give them some respect and give them some development because they've been through a lot, bless them. And now they've got to teach your characters, which is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> if you are going to kill them off, give them an aim. Give them an aim and a goal that they really want to achieve so when they don't reach it, when they do and they, and they do die, it hurts twice as much. If you're going to let them retire, let them retire. If there's a reason for them vanishing, then give a good reason. Like the aim. They want to go and do the aim. They, you know, oh yeah, we trust you to do your own thing on this adventure, but I've got my own shit to do. Goodbye. Treat them with respect and give them some kind of development and arc, because whether you kill them off or not, it still means so much more in the long run. This video went on much longer than I thought it was going to, but it was so much fun and it's an interesting topic and I am going to be doing another video pretty soon talking about the five kinds of mentors because, like I said, they're complicated. There is not just one kind and good god there are so many of them to discuss. <laughs> but for now, I hope you are doing well, I hope you're staying safe, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye my scribblers.